Now that you have a pretty good idea for the structure of controllers and some anti-patterns to stay away from, let's get into how we can customize some things. So uh, we already know that this projects uh, index method right here is going to be mapped to the index method on the projects uh, index page. So it looks like I have the server running. So if I come here, you can see all these items. And these are directly connected to, in the controller, this project all call. Now, what if we wanted to not do all, but instead we wanted to limit it to the last five items. So if I do that, come back here, hit refresh, you can see that it brings back only the last five items. So you can control that with the limit call. Uh, and there are tons and tons of methods that, uh, that you can play with when it comes to what you can call on one of these model files. Another one, and this is a little bit of review because we did a lot of this inside of the controller, so what if I wanted to do a title and only bring back the titles that say project one? I can say title project one, save, and then when I bring it back, it's only going to return the values with that come back from this where call. So I can do title of project one, and we can also do what we did earlier and say where not. So this is gonna bring back all of them except the one that says project one. So you can see all of them except the one that has project one in there. And you can also chain these methods together. So you don't have to just use one single method. So I can do project where not title is equal to project one, limit five. Come back here, hit refresh, and there you go. It brings back all of the values where it's not equal to project one, and then it limits it to five. And if we come back here in the controller, or in, the, uh, in our terminal, you can see here in the log that this performed a, a, a SQL call right here. So it ran a select statement on projects from where projects have, or is not equal to, you can see not equal to right here, title project one, and then it's limiting it to five. So even though you may not have to type direct SQL into your call, Active Record will go and generate the properly formed SQL for you, which is a really nice thing, because if anyone's familiar with SQL, you know it can get a little bit messy and unwieldy. So this is a great way of, uh, of being able to use method calls that generate the SQL for you. So I'm gonna switch this back to all. Another good example would be, say that you were creating this project for a specific, uh, for an application where users would log in and they'd only see their projects. So this is a pretty common thing that you would do. So in that case, you do something like where user ID is equal to the current user dot ID. This isn't, won't do anything obviously for us now because we don't have a authentication system built in the system yet, but this is a very common one you would do because what this is doing at the query level, it's looking at projects and it looks in the database and it looks through all of the projects and it only brings back the one where the current user uh, the current user ID matches the ID associated with that project. So it protects against uh, user seeing projects that don't belong to them. So that's just another way that you can, uh, you can run those types of queries. So that should give you a good idea on how you can run customized queries inside of the controller. And this doesn't just have to be in the index action like you've seen. If we go to the pages controller, we run queries right here. And all the same things that we did before, uh, earlier, we could run those queries right here. Doesn't have to just be project all, you could run all different types of queries in there. Now, one thing to note is as easy as it is to run these queries inside of the index method and inside the controller, 
I've seen queries in some of these active record calls that can get really messy where you could have a couple if else statements and all of that lined up in the index action and that can get a little bit ugly from a code perspective. So what you'll do then and what we'll get into uh, in some upcoming episodes is being able to integrate what are called scopes. And scopes are actually placed inside the model file and that's where you can create methods that will scope out your queries and then you can just call with one word what that query is inside the controller method and make your code even look a lot cleaner. So we'll get into the, how to do that later but this should give you a good idea on how you can uh, use custom queries inside of your controllers.